it's time to learn about a few more of those data flow property wrappers I alluded to earlier in the course. You're familiar with state and binding now. To review, the difference between state and binding is sort of like the difference between a value and reference type. State is like a value type because it holds the data. Binding is like a reference type because the data is stored somewhere else. When you pass a state, you're passing a copy of the data, whereas when you pass a binding, you're passing a reference to the data. Something we didn't talk about before is that state is only intended to work with value types. What happens when you have an actual reference type that you need to use with SwiftUI? Fortunately, state comes with a companion for reference types, state object, which works like state, but is made specifically for reference types. Let's take a look. We've got a new sample project that we'll work with for the rest of the course. It's for keeping track of your favorite movies and writing them. We're borrowing it from another tutorial on the site, which I will link to in the author notes. Feel free to pause the video and have a look around if you want. I'll be giving you a bit of a tour as we go either way. Let's start by seeing how state is already being used in this app, just to review. Open up userview.swift. There are two state properties in here, one to keep track of the user's name, and that one is bound to the text field, and another for a favorite genre, which is bound to this genre picker view. They're laid out inside of a form, a Swift UI component you haven't worked with yet, but it gives you this nice formatting if you're building a, well, a form. So this binding to favorite genre is passed into genre picker, which is another custom view in this project. Take a look at it. There is the other half of the state binding dance we've been using in this course. This binding attribute lets us pass in a binding to some data that is stored somewhere other than with this particular view. Something you haven't seen yet is how this sort of data management lets you easily reuse views like this genre picker. It's not just used in the user view to set the favorite genre. If you look at addMovie.swift, you'll see genre picker is used again. A different binding is passed in so you can pick a genre for a movie you're adding to the app. As I said a bit ago, all of these state properties we've been looking at are value types, structs, or in the case of genre, an enumeration. But if you look over in movielist.swift, the main view in the app, this movie store is a class. So try a live preview here and go to add a movie to the store. It won't appear when you go back. The movie has been added to the store. You'll see it as soon as you stop the live preview. SwiftUI just doesn't know it needs to update when movie store changes. So try out a new property wrapper attribute, state object. When you use state, SwiftUI takes control of the life cycle of that property. It keeps the value of a state property even when the view refreshes. State object will work just like that for reference types. Try a live preview again. Add another movie. And hey, we can see it right away this time. There is one more bit that is letting the state object attribute work. Go and have a look at the movie store type. And note that it conforms to observable object. 